Coach, can you talk about the, the depth of defensive backs, specifically corners on this team, and how excited you are to use them all? Well, when we came in here, that's one of the first things Coach Bowles had mentioned to me that really they were in free agency. They were really going to try to go after some several guys in the free agent market to really upgrade the position, so to speak. And as you look, we went through phase two now into OTA one. The depth is tremendous right now. We, were, matter of fact, I was speaking with Joe, the DB coach, right on the field. We have a lot of guys fighting for X amount of spots, and it's really, really healthy competition. Right. Well, when you look back there, you know, you added some very quality individuals back there. You got Pro Bowl caliber DBs that you bought on board. And really the thing you like about it is the veteran leadership those guys bring, along with their playmaking ability, things that they've done in the past. But the thing is that I look at it, they're all buying into the system as a whole. And everybody's kind of trying to gel together. So that's what we're doing. What are your expectations staying in secondary? What are your expectations for Milner? Obviously, he had a high pedigree, high pick. Uh, how, how do you see him feel it, you know, kind of feeling in some of the gaps that you might need him? Well, when we look at D coming in, you see a guy kind of still working off of an injury, trying to get himself 100%. But as we uh, looked at him, we expect D to compete for a position on the roster like everybody else. You know, this was a top 10 pick, and we think he has a lot of ability, and we expect him to compete. Do you have a timetable on when he might be able to As of right now, we leave that with the trainers, and we just get him, like some an individual, get him in the meetings, and we'll just wait on the trainer to give us to go ahead on him. You guys obviously have two starters. Well, right now we're kind of mentioned and matching, putting guys all over the place, just kind of one. We're trying to create some chemistry and we're trying to create a little flexibility to see what guys can do. You know, throughout this league, guys get banged up from time to time. And right now, as we spoke earlier, we do have some depth there. So right now we're kind of seeing what guys can do. Wait, you guys drafted like, uh, Go ahead. When you guys drafted right on the rooms, okay. <coughs> Todd said, you never have to meet off the defensive line. No question. You can figure out how to work, work them all in. Right. But how exactly do you see that working with Mo and Sheldon and David Harrison and, and Leonard? How, how is that going to work? Well, it's kind of like you just mentioned before, having a lot of defensive linemen is, in this league is a really good problem to have. So we're really ecstatic with the Leonard, uh, with the addition of the guys we have here. So it's really a, it's our job as coaches to figure out how to maximize all their abilities. And following Coach Bowles and the thing he's done in the past at Arizona, whatever, if you can play, we find a way with our system, with its flexibility, to give you a chance to accent what you can do well. Well, it's so much passing nowadays. When you break down yourself at the end of the year, you see 11 personnel is so high. So you really, a third corner is very like a starter in so many ways. Casey, how much of a challenge is it uh, when you're trying to fit in the pieces up on the, uh, you know, the front four or whatever, uh, not having Mo here uh, and not having the ability to you know, utilize Sheldon Mo, you know, Damon and Leonard to get uh, all of them together? Well, the thing is, right now we're still in such a voluntary phase, and we still have training camp, this and that. So doing the thing you, as you'll see going forward, our system is very player friendly. This is not a system where you say, well, you'll be so far behind, he can't catch up. This is a system that a guy can come in and really pick up in a hurry, really pick up in a hurry. And it really it still is a system that let – you maximize what you do well. So you don't have to change anything or tweak anything to fit the system. What about it makes it that way? It's just, it's, you know, it was, it's really player friendly. It's not overly complicated as far as on the player side, but it can be problematic for some teams based on the way we do things and the communication. But it's real simple, it's real cut and dry. And once you get it, it really enables you the ability to play fast. This is obviously the scheme that Todd used in Arizona last year. How similar is it? He was a position coach. Right. Right. You know. 
Well, when I look back to times we were together, me and Todd together in Dallas, then I look at the time we were together in Miami, then I look at the time then when, then the, that we've been apart and see the tweaks he's made, a lot of stuff we've done in the past at different stops. You can see a little of this, a little concept from this, a little comes. You can see how he put it all together. I know we're a few months away from actual games, even practice games, but uh, when, the, when play calling, when it comes to game day and play calling, will it be a collaborative effort? To, will Todd call the plays? Will What are the dynamics of how that will you know, we really hadn't talked a lot about it. When we first got here, we said we'll sit down and we'll just see how it all works out. So right now, we're going as we go through OTAs and we went through the voluntary mini camp. Right now, he's put me in every possible situation that could come up in the game to, you know, get, you know, there's nothing should come up in the game that we haven't prepared for. But, you know, the one thing that, you know, I've asked, been asked this question before is that when I came here and everything, I like, sort of checked my ego at the door. At the end of the day, we really don't care who calls it. We just want to win. You're mixing and matching. It sounds like from what you were saying earlier that you will work him a little well, when we when we look at DC right now, we really haven't had a lot of hands on with D. But you know, just kind of stand watching from afar his skill set, we think D is, has a lot of useful tools for us. We just curious to see when we get him 100 percent exactly where he goes. Casey, when you look at the depth in the secondary, okay, um, because of what happened last year, a lot of these guys got a chance to start. Marcus Williams, Darren Walls, you know, guys like that. Having those guys as as potential backups. How helpful is that since they've had starting experience? That's a great question. Matter of fact, we were just talking about it today. There are the, the, those guys, Darren and Marcus, so far with phase one, phase two, OTA, they've been doing an outstanding job. So it's right there, you know, and when before it all shakes out on the final, some, it's going to be some tough decisions because it's a lot or a lot of good football players on the back end. Well, uh, that's a question I'm going to let Coach Bowles answer. <laughs> Our job, we're going to try to make it as hard on those guys as we can to pick this team because those guys are really trying hard. Then you, When you see the influx of talent that came in, the, those guys are really, really competing. Have you ever coached anyone uh, as competitive as uh, Drogba? You know what? I've uh, coached a lot of competitive players, but as you look at Revis and the things he's done, I'm just so glad he's on our team. But, you know, and just watching him and pra practicing. Matter of fact, when I spoke to the defense this morning, that's one thing I mentioned. You know, we made a lot of mistakes the other day in practice, but as I look, one thing I know, I think we got a chance to be competitive if we can keep building on that. That's across the board.